Previously on Legends of Alos. Briar is finishing the finer points of her and Karun's disguises as Aurelia returns from her preparations from within the keep with temple garments in hand, enough for the three of them, including their captive comrades. Aurelia updates the two on what she learned of what is in store for the others, and they set about their final timing and rehearse the execution of their plan, tweaking it whenever seems appropriate in an attempt to accomplish the task without breaking their cover. Porvis reaffirms his efforts will be in place to maintain the distraction for as long as necessary and perform whatever aid he can from the outside. He wishes them luck, his eyes settling long upon Aurelia before they part ways. Meanwhile, the echoing clangs of sabaton-clad feet are heard by Rowan, Asher, and Martisan as the metallic cacophony crescendos and the dungeon door opens to their cells. The elite guard enter and line the hall of their block as they part their rank down the middle, making way for Queen Belbeth, who walks haughtily towards her prisoners. She taunts them with allusions to their fate, with Asher questioning the guard of their character as she goads Rowan from the other side of the iron bars of their cells. The queen bemuses and shocks the party members, though, when she demonstrates the grip she holds over her men, as one complies with her instruction for him to kill himself, slitting his own throat without pause or hesitation. Asher saves the man from an ultimate fate with an utterance, though the soldier's disposition remains unfaltering for his liege, and merely resumes his formation in the lineup. Before she and her guard depart, she makes one final decree, that the first of the three to set eyes within the Red Chambers shall be Martisan. The three captives speak as the Sabaton clangs echo into the distance, and they affirm that they will not see the inside of that chamber, no matter what happens. Again, time passes, and another visit from the smug guardsman comes. With the same courtesy as the captives have begrudgingly become accustomed to, he announces that they have another visitor, this time bringing in Zuther, Lord of Sirach. Once they are left to themselves by their jailer, Zuther introduces himself, along with a show of support, and that there are others who are privy to more truths than are being publicly announced. This all thanks to Zuther's other position as head scrymaster. His mastery of observation and information gathering has enabled him to obscure some of the information that has been divulged, though he must maintain distance so as to not compromise his position in life. He invites them to Sirach once enough time has passed to cool the pursuit and observation efforts towards the party. The three speak amongst themselves again after their visitor departs, obviously with a much more positive tone than after the Queen's departure. With the hours drawing late, Briar, Aurelia, and Karun set their plans into motion, as the crowds gather on the streets above to provide a hopefully suitable enough cover for their plan. Rather than infiltrate the keep through the same passageways as their escape, their guises allow them to enter the temple through the front gate, and thanks to the legitimate position of Aurelia underneath Jothrind, they are able to enter with no resistance. They make their way towards Jothrind's office, and though they are stopped by Nathaniel, a younger paladin, Aurelia is able to speak convincingly enough that no suspicion falls upon their cover story of investigating the weapons of the imprisoned. Upon entering Jothrin's office and making sure they are unobserved, Aurelia is able to use her Misty Step ability to discreetly enter the locked room bordering his and remove the weapons that belong to the party members currently imprisoned. Once they are secured, they make their way to Heaven's Bridge in the Keep. Only one individual recognizes their entry and efforts, but it being Jothrind, only enforces the notion that this is what he believes needs to be done as well. Now within the keep itself, they make their way towards the barracks, doing their best to maintain an inconspicuous disposition. As they make their way through the courtyard, they briefly observe Princess Coel being consoled by her mother. And Coel does look upon them, but only for a moment as the party proceed 
out of the courtyard and along to the barracks and jail. They finally arrive at the jails, and of course, they are questioned as to their purpose, to which Aurelia continues to maintain the ruse in response. Though they must contend with the same snobbish guard, they do eventually gain access to the cells, and that same guard leaves them to conduct their business for a moment. Once alone, the equipment and disguises are turned over to the captive party members, and with Asher bolstering her skills, Aurelia deftly picks the locks, and the party is finally reunited once more. Though the jailed are now free from their cells, the group proper is far from out of the woods yet, and the sounds from the single entrance to the dungeon block push the party into having to react expediently. Briar quickly makes the additional members of the party invisible as the three infiltrators feign an attack and aggressive escape made by the captives. Unfortunately, though the snobbish guard may be rude and curt, he is not wholly idiotic and commands two assistants to maintain guard at the door, considering he is aware that invisibility is well within their capabilities. The group attempts multiple tactics to discreetly redirect their attentions out of the dungeon, but the guardsman is hard-pressed to falter. Eventually, Asher makes a bold move and utilizes Charm Person to finally sway their captors, unfortunately also making himself visible in the process. He gives a command to those whom were charmed, and he is able to shapeshift to hide himself now that the invisibility has been broken, but the guards are still reluctant to leave. Eventually, there is another that comes to the dungeon, and it turns out to be Hargar. There is pause in the air, but it is not long that Hargar's true position is shown, as he instructs the guards to do as ordered by the temple members and permit their leave. Karun and Aurelia's attempts at redirecting their attention to an assault on the queen being reason enough for the guards to leave the dungeon in pursuit. Once the other guards have left, Hargar instructs them to flee as far as they can, and the party quickly exits through the now unobstructed door. It is tense as they make their way out of the keep. Porvis instructs via a sending response that their horses are at the northeast gate, awaiting their arrival for their flight from Kinghaven. The young paladin, Nathaniel, is also encountered again on their way out, but he poses no threat due to Aurelia's masterful deception and Jothrand is encountered as well. And despite the truth being known to all in that conversation, Aurelia and he keep up the ruse, and eventually they part, a sadness hanging in the air about the uncertainty in time and place when next they'll meet for a card game. As they attempt to leave, a guard at the temple does try to keep them inside for their own safety, but a final deception of providing medical aid to the injured rioters and civilians works to allow them egress across the temple bridge. They take but a moment to breathe, for only a moment is what they have as they continue their way towards their steeds on the outskirts of town. It is there that they meet Porvis, standing amongst their horses awaiting the party's arrival. Martisan is saddled up upon moonlight, Dom's horse, as Aurelia is guided to Jathril's horse honor by Rowan. They mount their steeds after thanking and bidding farewell to Porvis, whom takes a moment longer to say goodbye to Aurelia before they gallop away from King's Haven as they begin the next leg of their journey north toward Herendine. And it is from here we shall continue the story of the Legends of Alos.